This video is sponsored by my utter failure of being able to keep up with an upload schedule. Comment below to be in with the chance of winning my adoration and friendship. Now, let's crack on with the video. So there I was, doing my morning routine, going through my daily art feeds, as any good art aficionado should do, and I came across a picture that really caught my eye. At first glance, this is just your typical Georgian oil painting, but something really made this stand out to me, you know? See, this lonely black man here led me down a rabbit hole. A rabbit hole which saw myself travel across pre-transatlantic slavery Europe. And I noticed one thing. Black people, especially in these contexts, were viewed very differently. They were seen as a signifier of class. If you had a black man in your pictures here, you had travelled. Well travelled. You know, the whole view on race was different. See, my trip on back on black time led me to this picture. This one here was very different from all the other ones I'd seen. The ones I'd seen really were, kind of had black people as ornaments. But this one here was different. See, it had the black man as a central piece involved in the action. This made me wonder, who is this man? See, this 1511 extract of the Royal Tournament Scrolls is one of the prized possessions of the London College of Arms and has a black man as a central figure. After doing some digging, I found out that this man is a man called John Blank. John Blank, Royal Trumpeteer, has a prestigious honour of being the UK's first and earliest recorded black man post-Roman era. So, some may consider him a pioneer. So this early discovery of this black British pioneer got me thinking even more. Who are the pioneers of black british history who are the flag bearers the journey setters the first steppers of black british history because often growing up in the uk and also being black generally across the world you quickly realize that your history is quickly forgotten so maybe it's up to me to try and remember some black british pioneers so today we start off in a place where i enjoy the most let's find our black british pioneers in football watch it watch the football watch it watch it it's gonna move watch the football it's so wrong so today, I would like you to take a journey with me back on Black Time, where we score some goals. This is the Football Edition. Regis, York. That's the equaliser. Near the other end. So today we'll be having a look at the first black British ballers to represent Britain and Ireland. And yes, I'm going to be considering Northern Ireland as a part of Ireland in this one. And if you think otherwise, you can take your loyalist nonce free and get out the window. Yeah, so uh, just to let you know, I'm going to try and do an accent for each one of the um, the nations of Britain that we're going to be going to. If I fail, let me know. If I don't, who cares? So we're going to be doing this in chronological order. I'm going to have a little pause while you guys consider which nation threw out their first black skin brother onto the field for the first time. So to kick us off, you see what I did there? To kick us off, we're going to Scotland with six foot fullback Andrew Watson made his debut on March 12th, 1880. What? 1881? To read my script notes correctly there, on March 12th, 1881, Andrew Watson represented Scotland as their captain in a win against England. And do you know what? Yeah, this guy must have been an absolute baller. It was throwing out banana skins in the 80s at black football players in England. Imagine what the racism that this man had to endure in 1881. I cannot believe. I cannot even believe it. Turns out the theory was right. Big Andy was actually a very, very big baller because on his first appearance for Scotland, he captained the side to a 6-1 win over England, which to this day is the biggest win Scotland have ever seen over their neighbours to the south. So it turns out the best game that Scotland have had against England, a black man was captaining. Mad. The importance of Big Andy cannot be scoffed at one bit. Not just in Scotland alone, Andy Watson was the first ever black man to represent any international team in association football. For me, what makes this feel even crazier is the fact that the next black man to represent Scotland was Nigel Kwasi in the year of our Lord 2004, nearly 120 years after the first black man. It makes me think that either these guys were like, wow, this black man is so good, we need to get another black man as good as him. Or Scotland just literally thought, right, we've had a black man here now. I think that's one is enough because one's all right, but two's a bit of a crowd, lads. Two's a bit of a crowd. <laughs> That's the best accent I can do. I'm doing my best, man. <laughs> Next on our trip back on Black Time, we go to Wales, where on December the 5th, 1931, the Welsh team ran out against Northern Ireland, where left wing Eddie Parrish represented them for the first time. Unfortunately for Ed, this saga doesn't end with a happy ending, where Wales came second to a 4-0 drubbing by the Northern Irish. Eddie would never receive another call-up again. 
By no means did this mean Eddie was a slouch. This man managed to amass 268 appearances for the likes of Bournemouth, Northampton Town, Cheltenham Town, and scored 60 goals in the process. Yes, by no means is it Lionel Messi or Cristiano Ronaldo output, but the man knew how to bang a goal. And to be perfectly honest, any man back in them times, pre-World War times, and scoring goals, 60 goals and that, in them WM formations, man, this guy was a boy. Once more, we take this journey forward in time to the year of our Lord, 1978, the 29th of November where England, at the, in the height of the Cold War, take on the Eastern Bloc bad boys, Czechoslovakia. And on that day, at fullback, we have our very own Vivian Alexander Anderson, MBE. This one's actually one that I knew uh, without having to do the research and one that I think a lot more people should know about because Vivian Anderson was an absolute baller after a stellar season in 1978 where he had to endure a lot of racism being one of the early players constantly getting pelted with bananas, racist chants from rival fans. This never deterred him. And after that great season in 1977 for Nottingham Forest, Vivian found himself in an England shirt in a 1-0 win against Czechoslovakia. What an absolute boy. Vivian went to represent the three Lions 30 more times, scoring two goals. But what really sets him apart is his accolades. Man like Viv got 594 league appearances for the likes of Nottingham Forest, Arsenal, Man United, Sheffield Wednesday. And on top of that, he was a serial winner. Yo, I need to give Big Viv the respect his balling ass deserves. I need to read his accolades out off on my phone. So this man won three League Cups two European Cups, now known as the Champions League, one English top flight, now known as the Premier League, one FA Cup, one European Super Cup. <sighs> On top of his loads of appearances, hard working, while doing this in the height of racism, damn, England, it took you a while, took you up until the 70s, you have your first black one, but damn, you found yourself a baller. I don't think we're all getting this. All these madness and accolades while getting bananas pelted in your face by your own actual fans. What a certified G. Now, if that's not balling out in adversity, I don't know what is. Inject it into my veins, Viv. I couldn't do the Welsh accent, um, uh, but this is probably what Viv's accent will be. You are, mate. How's it going? It's my accent, kind of, because... I live in England, but of course I can do that accent. What about Viv was a Scouse? You're right, mate. I'm Vivian Anderson. I'm a Scouse. I score goals and that, man. Big tackles and that. They call me Viv Energy Anderson. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> and coming up the rear, it's Ireland. This is probably a really sorry attempt at an Irish accent. This is really terrible. So coming up the rear, we try... That sounded a lot better on the script. We have Ireland, who travelled to the United States. And in a 3-2 win, they handed Chris Hewton his first ever score up for the Irish national team. See, this one surprised me because this is actually a man I'm very used to seeing um, as a Premier League fan. He's a man that's managed uh, the likes of Newcastle, Norwich, Brighton, taking both Newcastle and Brighton into the Premier League, if I remember correctly. And to be perfectly honest, you know, I've always had a bit of a soft spot for Chris Hewton because, you know, it's very rare you see successful black managers in the game. But God almighty, is his style of football boring as hell. My goodness me, God, I'd rather watch paint dry than watch a man's team defend all day. Right, let's not let this dead pragmatic defensive football of Chris Hewton's deter from the fact that this man could play back in his day. I think he's got, got an extra 53 caps for Ireland, um, getting over 300 appearances for Tottenham, where he won two FA Cups and a UEFA Cup. So definitely no slouch. And yeah, I think he's very, very well received up in Tottenham. You know, they see him as one of their legends. They ain't got many, so. <laughs> no, but I ain't even joking, man. This man is for real. This guy is actually a pioneer, a black pioneer in the English game. And he's, kick, and he's doing his big, big things. I know he's out of a job right now, but you know, he's one of the few guys that was a pioneer back in the day is a big pioneer's management we need to stop putting some respect on Hewton's name I, I'm going to start a fan club the Chris Hewton fan club from now on I ain't saying no I ain't hearing no bad words about Chris Hewton for god damn it so that brings us to an end to our short journey back on black time I hope this video kind of inspires you guys out to go and look more for black history and, more the, and if this interests you you guys can have a look in the description below for some of the sources that I use but yeah I just wanted to do a little platform where we can get to talk about some black pioneers and something really cool that black people have done even if it's in the world of football I find it cool so let me talk about it but anyway chilling it's been your favorite uncle on the internet Ronnie Raxi enjoy the rest of your evening day wherever it is or where you're watching it and I uh, will be seeing you next time Peace.